Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today we are in the awesome survival game called Stranded Deep. Now, I have sunk nearly 200 hours into this game over the years, and every time there's a big update, I like to come back in and take a closer look. Previously, I did a video of 20 tips, and it covered lots of things that were relevant to that version. So what I've done now is I've gone back in, it's a couple of years later, we've got 25 tips this time, looking at a whole range of subjects, so I hope that you find something useful here, something that you didn't know, and that it enriches your time in Stranded Deep. Let's get going. Tip 1. I like to build a fair few water still collectors. That's because um, they're not like they used to be in the game. They don't automatically fill up, gathering the moisture from the air. They only fill up when it rains. And sometimes it can go for days without raining. So the more you have to collect the rain when it comes, the better. In fact, I'm probably going to build a couple more. When I'm out and about exploring islands, I will build a shelter, generally on most islands unless I'm there quickly. And when I build the shelter you can see it's got this arrow, this point to it. I will always point this back to my main island. Kind of like an indicator of which direction to head back. Because it can be quite confusing when you're navigating which way your base is, unless of course you take the compass. And even then it can still be quite confusing. So I use these to point back in the direction that I've come from. The best crop in game is the potato. Not because you eat it, but because you turn it into fuel for your engine. See over there I've got a raft with an engine. They're difficult to come by and you have to monitor them because they can the crop can die and you will lose the potato. When it is there you'll see a little sign that says you can gather the potato. You do that and you will then need to put it in a still up here, in this fuel still and it will fill this uh, fuel still collector and you can take the fuel out of it there. So they are really valuable, don't waste them early on, save them and even if they go spoilt you can then plant them up and grow more potatoes. Really important if you want to get around all the islands quickly Save your potatoes. A great source of food early on is the, the bird snare. Really recommend it. It gives you meat and it's constantly working. It doesn't need any maintenance. Just put it on a surface like this rocks here where you've seen birds land maybe even on the shoreline. It will catch a bird every so often. You can gather them down here and they don't go off. They just lie here and you can skin them using a knife and you can start to uh, collect up some meat. The most efficient way of preserving food is in the smoker. You can see it here. You've got to build the fire and then the ring of stones and then the actual smoker itself. It doesn't need a lot of materials but you can hang four bits of meat in here uh, like I've just talked about the the birds this one, you can put small bits of meat in here. After a while, the meat will turn brown and it's then preserved and uh, a good source of food. You can see a bit here. Tip six. I like to keep a water skin next to my water still collectors. Just because if these fill up, yeah, they will stop filling. There's four servings, if you like, for each still. If you fill up, you can drink up to your own fill, so you're, you're topped up with water. But if there's still more water, having the empty water skin there, you can, or the water skin, you can use it to take some of the water off the water still collector and preserve it in that. And it will stay in that forever. It, it never runs, it never dries up in the water skin. Tip seven. When building your raft, you will have your motor or your rudder at the back. It's tempting to put the 
the um, anchor at the back as well, as you would do maybe a ship, I don't know. But what I find is really convenient is if you have the anchor at the front of your raft. So even while you're controlling the rudder, you can reach over and drop or lift the anchor, making the stop quick. Because it's actually quite difficult to stop sometimes in the right spot. And if you can just reach out and drop the anchor as easy as this, tip eight. And another uh, important thing you don't necessarily realize early on is you can have a motor and a rudder on the same raft. Because fuel is in such short supply in game, you ultimately will run out if you're out on a, a foray. Having the rudder and then of course the sail as well on the same raft means that you can carry on traveling once your motor runs out of fuel. Tip nine. Again, another raft tip. I always keep my raft small. I find it much easier to maneuver and in the past I've had big rafts and they are really slow to turn and in fact they generally feel slower as they're traveling so I keep them just to three platforms don't forget you need to create floors on your rafts before you can place down your motors or your rudders that's really important and the sails so you need uh, the buoyancy and then the floor as well Tip 10. One of the predators in game is the giant crab. It can do you some damage, but the best way to take it out is to creep up behind it and hit it from behind. Now crabs can't turn, so you are out of reach, if you like, of that crab. And then five or six hits later, it will die. It kind of runs off. Most of the animals in game will run off when they're at a certain damage level. Ultimately they will return if they see you again but um, that's the best way to take crabs out from behind just like that. The refined pick is a very handy tool to have even early on. Now when you set yourself up on an island, my base is over there, you will use up all the rock on the island. Now rock is a really vital resource because it helps you build axes and you don't find like a modern axe anymore in game. That's been taken out. You just can only make axes now. And so being able to harvest rock from these nodes is quite handy. So if you get the refined axe, you need leather to make the refined axe, so usually it just you can find it in crates or containers on ships if you haven't got to the stage where you can make it yet. And then you can gather the rock by hitting these nodes. You get maybe three or four on a big island, maybe a couple on a small island, and you gather the very important resource that is rock. Tip 12. You can actually see whether the moon is rising or setting because it's actually moving. See, I put the pointer there. You see, this moon is rising up at the moment. So we've got the full night ahead of us. Tip 13. As I travel from island to island, I collect up the lanterns. I then place them around my base and turn them on. Now, during the day, they automatically turn themselves off. But at night, when it hits a certain light level, they will pop back on and the base is nicely lit. Also, another really good source of light is the furnace. You can see up here. I have these inside, but it's always burning, and it will provide with a constant source of light, which is very handy. Tip 14. When a fire is burning, it will just keep burning until it is either out of fuel or you extinguish it. Monitor them. It is a waste of wood if you just let the fire burn out. Often the meat will cook more quickly and it won't need all the fuel on the fire. So tip 14, monitor your burning fires. Now this one obviously we can extinguish. We don't need it burning there. Tip 15. 
when considering your structure, because it's quite nice to have a structure for shelter and for storage and just to keep things in order. The tarp walls are really cheap to make. They just take one cloth and then you can put up a tarp wall like that and it gives you a structure to build upon and goes up quickly. And you can make cloth out of the fibrous leaves with the loom as the game develops. So it's quite an effective method. Also, the corrugated scrap, you just need one of those to make this corrugated wall with a window. So it goes up pretty quickly. And you tend to find corrugated scrap a bit more commonly than, say, the plank wall. It's probably partly because you can make the plank walls. Now, there are a number of containers in game where you've got your standard wood container you find around in ships and wrecks and whatnot and they can take three spaces. You've then got um, tables which you can stack stuff on and a container shelf. Now these do not open like the boxes and the tables themselves are quite awkward. You have to drop things on them and they can kind of roll off and it's, it's very disorganized. The boxes themselves are great to store things in, so I sometimes line them up like this and put certain objects in these. Although it's difficult to remember exactly where and which containers objects are in. So I tend to stack my objects like this. It doesn't really look very neat and tidy, but I find it the most efficient, quick way to find stuff and to build stuff, especially seeing if you've got it on the floor in front of you and you press C to craft something, it will take everything that is on the floor there into your crafting recipe so that you can make things quickly rather than have to rummage through different crates. So I always at the moment find that hopefully they will introduce a better system for storing items in game at some point. You will find lots of different engine parts around the map. Okay, they're generally filters, um, what else we've got here, fuel, electrical parts. But the most valuable engine part is the is this here, the vehicle engine part. They're pretty rare, you don't find many of them around the map. If you see one, do not leave it behind, take it with you. It's an integral part of the raft motor and then also when you build the gyrocopter you need it for that engine as well. Now obviously the gyrocopter parts are unique and they're found in a specific location on the ship. So I don't really count those in this, it's the vehicle engine part. If you see it, grab it, and don't leave it behind. Tip 18. Palm saplings and yucca trees all respawn on your island. When you see them respawn, go and harvest them because then they can start their cycle again. And you can keep the Keep a good supply going. And you can see I'm, my axe has just broke there. You can see these make the lashing. And you need this in lots of different recipes. It's uh, one of the key resources. So they respawn. So go out and harvest those when you see those appear. Tip 19. The only other resource that respawns on your island is the crab. The giant crab, okay. And you can skin them and you get two bits of crab meat. And so because it does respawn, you have to be a little bit careful. Suddenly one will appear and attack you, pinch you, 
and do some damage. But like the palm saplings, the crabs do respawn. And I'm not really including the birds in this because I don't see them as part of the island flora and fauna. Tip 20. When I'm heading out on a looting run, I will normally take with me five or six containers. Now, if you look at your normal inventory, you can carry one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine items. All right? If you take the cases, each container takes up one space in your inventory, and each wooden container has three slots inside it. So you can triple your load by taking the containers with you and um, obviously when you're out you will pick up containers so you don't have to take a full load if you don't want to but if you're doing a run for say wood or other resources such as that take the containers it's much more efficient tip 21 when you're building your first raft, you need to do it out at sea, out beyond the island. So you can see the tide here. Okay, when you put down your first buoyancy section of your raft, you go here, your wood raft base, for example, or the, the tires raft base immediately it gets taken by the current and it's because your body has no mass and you can't stop things just the very nature of the game you'll need to have with you the equipment to make a floor and the anchor okay so as soon as you build the base put the put the floor on top of it and then jump on top of that, you better hold space and climb on top and then lay down your anchor. Otherwise, what will happen is, the, as you can see over here, the wooden base gets swept up to the shore and you just can't do anything with it after that. It's worth noting that you can dismantle a range of objects, including foundations. So you just have to keep here. A little hammer comes up and it shows the item being dismantled. And then once you've dismantled it, you will get back a percentage of your original um, build. Not all of it. So, for example, if you dismantle a motor, you don't get the motor part back. Tip 23. The crude spear is an efficient weapon. You can build it using one stick, and then you'll find it takes about six, seven, or eight strikes to kill a shark like this or a boar. Um, you right hold and then press the left mouse button to fire or release the right, pull the spear back. And you can see here, you can go in and and collect the spears up again like this <gasps> like so and then if you've got a knife you can skin this is a tiger shark oh, get the disgusting. hide you've got to have the knife on you to do this so I'm making the most of this shark and we've got three skin that's one meat two meat and three meat so you can harvest the sharks it's quite handy to have a little pontoon area like I've created there to be able to do that um, sometimes they will run off they will swim away if you they're near to death but they will um, retain the damage and the spears in their bodies so you might see them again later on with those spears embedded in them tip 24 
When travelling around, you will see the islands have a particular shape. The rocks in the middle take a particular form and you can tell which is your own island through the shape of the central pillar of rock, if you like. Some of them are shorter, some of them have more than one rock, some of them are, well, I guess, kind of phallic. Um, and you'll also see that there are masts that stick out of the water as well. These can be quite distinctive. I often spot this mast here from a distance and it kind of reassures me that I'm heading back to the right island. So just take little visual cues as you travel around and use them to guide you back to safety. Tip 25 and my last tip for this video is always, always think about where your next drink is coming from. It really is key. Ultimately, you may need to go and restock on coconuts and strip the islands in your area like I have done here. They keep you going. Building more water stills definitely, as I've said before, is important. But if it hasn't rained and it hasn't rained for days and days, they don't fill up. They're no good. Tuna in the early game is something that's going to quench your thirst. But there are really few other sources so you really are praying for the rain and the catch is if you're out off your island and it's raining you don't gather water back at your own base it doesn't seem to spread across to your own island it seems to be only where you are will it affect the stills so you've got to stay on your island and see if it rains if you go off it's not going to gather in your water stills. So build your water still collectors, gather your coconuts, and always think about where your next drink is coming from. My 25 tips for Stranded Deep. I hope you found them useful, interesting, helpful. I hope there was something there that you didn't know and that it enriches your experience in this really awesome game. It's a lot of fun. I come back to it from time to time when the developers have updated it and then try and complete everything in game I haven't actually done the gyrocopter yet I'm going to be getting around to doing that I'm not too worried about that what my key thing is survival and how to survive in game I'm thinking about doing some more content for this but I need to know whether that's something you would be interested in watching if you are please let me know down below and uh, for instance for instance I've got a tour of the main ship in game there the the shipwreck and wonder whether you'd like to see that if you do let me know down below otherwise if you haven't subbed already it would be awesome if you could there'll be other survival game content on this channel as there has been for years now so you can always go back and check some of that as well so guys thanks again and i will see you in the next video take care